Microsoft just released their Surface Laptop Go 3, and today we're going to unbox it, go through the setup process, and take a look at it. And I know what you're thinking, Jerry, you're an Apple guy. Why would you be unboxing a Microsoft laptop? Well, fun fact, I'm actually a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. I have been for many, many years, and on a daily basis, my team and I manage around 1,600 servers. So yes, I use Windows and PCs every single day. And I actually needed one for my regular daily use at home for certain things that require Windows. And plus, I think it'd be a good laptop to test against the MacBook Air M2 and even the M1. So let's take a look at what this laptop has to offer. Again, Microsoft Surface Laptop Go 3, and this is the platinum color. It does come in four or five different colors, but I like to stick to the basics. This is the base model, $799 starting price. It is a i5 processor and it's got eight gigabytes of memory and 256 gigabyte SSD. And it's been a while since I've owned a Microsoft Surface device. I used to have a Surface Pro 8 and we had a Surface Go. Actually, we had two Surface Go's. So this is the first Surface device that I've had in the last couple of years. But let's go ahead and take a look at see what this guy has to offer. Oh, looks like there's a little pull tab right there. And there we are. All right. So up top, we have the Microsoft Surface tablet, which is, I think, a 12.4 inch display. We've got a power cord. And we got the power brick. And on here is the Microsoft Surface connector or Surface adapter or whatever it's called for power. And in here we have, I have no idea, probably not an Apple sticker, would be my guess. Welcome to Surface, and not much. All right. Well, that was easy. Now, I probably won't be using the power adapter because the new Surface does have USB-C, and I usually prefer to charge that way rather than have additional cables if I don't need them. So we'll just go ahead and stash those away. So Microsoft's packaging is actually very Apple-like nowadays, it seems. It feels pretty good, it looks good, and I wanna keep this intact because I'm crazy like that, and I like to basically wrap these up like new when I sell them in the future. So there we go, the Surface Laptop Go 3. That feels different. It definitely doesn't feel like a MacBook. The top of the case is aluminum, but the bottom is definitely plastic and rubber. So it's definitely got a different feel to it. On the left side, we have a USB-A port, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack. And on the right side, we have that Microsoft dock connector or Surface dock connector. And now the best part of getting a brand new laptop is that first time you open it up. And look at that. The Windows logo just popped on and it is already booting up. And wow, first impressions. This is a nice, clean little keyboard setup. I really do like the contrast between the gray keys and trackpad versus the silver casing. I think that looks really good. And up top we have the function row keys and the media keys that you would expect. And then look at this, the power button is actually kind of flat. It's different from the other keys and it's kind of maybe a glass or plastic surface. And it looks like that's probably a fingerprint sensor, but I don't actually know because I haven't really paid attention to these devices, but I'm guessing that's what that is. The keys feel okay to type on, but overall it looks pretty good and it feels pretty solid, I guess. There we go. So we are booting up into the Windows 11 setup process. Again, this is a 12.4 inch display. It's 1,536 pixels wide by 1,024 top to bottom. And it looks pretty good. I can definitely see some pixels. It's not quite as good as Apple's Retina displays, but it looks pretty good to at first glance. Using a screen reader. Turn on narrator by pressing well, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate having that accessibility feature, but we're just gonna hit yes for English. And it wants us to select a country. Now it's asking if this is the correct keyboard layout. I do want the US keyboard layout. Otherwise I'll get confused. And no, I don't want to add a second keyboard layout. And now it's asking to connect to Wi-Fi. So I will do that real quick. And this is a Wi-Fi 6 device. So not 6E, but I have really good Wi-Fi in my home. So it should still be pretty quick. And while that's setting up the Wi-Fi, I just gotta say, man, this laptop actually feels pretty good. Again, it's been a while since I've owned a Surface device and I liked my previous Surface devices, but, and I shouldn't be surprised, but it feels pretty good. 
And I always forget when coming from an Apple device that this is a touch screen. So I should be able to just tap on the screen if I want. And believe it or not, I actually wish that Macs had touch screens, especially when I'm using it on my lap or on the couch. It's easier to reach out and touch the screen than it is to pull my arm back and use the trackpad. And now it wants a name. So we'll just say SP1 next. And it looks like it went into a reboot. So now it wants me to sign into my Microsoft account to bring over settings that I've synced or even my Microsoft 365 account or, and now it wants me to set up my Microsoft account, which will bring over a lot of settings that I already have inside Microsoft and bring over my 365 subscription for the office products and whatnot. So we'll click sign in and I will go ahead and sign in. Oh, Microsoft knows me. So now it's asking if I want to restore some of the settings that I already have set up on another PC in my home. Um, let's see what view my option says. So I can set it up as a new device or I can restore from either of these options right here. I'll just go ahead and set up as a new device. Why not? And there we go. So it wants me to set up my fingerprint for security. So we'll say, yes, I want to do that. What does that look like? It says touch the power button. Oh, the power button lit up. That's kind of cool. So we will go ahead and touch it. Touch it again and keep touching. This is starting to feel inappropriate. If you've ever used Touch ID on a Mac or on iOS device or iPad, then it feels very similar to that. Now create a pin for logging in and safety. Okay, there's a lot to setting up computers these days. So now it's asking for privacy settings. Do I wanna give the computer my location? Do I wanna use Find My Device? Do I wanna send Microsoft diagnostic data? Do I wanna use Inking and Typing to transcribe from the Microsoft pen into text or other tailored experiences or advertising. Well, I'm gonna turn advertising ID off and I will accept the rest. Now it wants to customize your experience by having you choose the types of activities you will use this device for. And I guess this will give you personalized tips, ads, and recommendations based on my selection. Skip. Now I have the option to use my phone from my PC if I'm using an Android device, which I'm not going to be setting up at this moment. So we will skip. Now it's letting me know that Office apps are already installed and I'm signed in with my Microsoft ID. Got it. So as we're getting set up, we'll just talk about some of the specs real quick. Again, this is the base model Surface Laptop Go 3. It starts at 799 for eight gigabytes of memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. And eight gigabytes of memory for anything over $500 should not be the minimum. We should be at 16 minimum for Windows, for Mac, for everything, but I digress. This has an Intel i5 processor, an i5-12, 35U, so I'm curious to see how that performs against the M1 and the M2 in the MacBook Airs. It's got the built-in Intel XE graphics, and I have no idea how that's gonna perform, so that'll be interesting. We have a 12.4 inch display at the signature Microsoft three by two aspect ratio. It's got a thousand to one contrast, so just regular LCD, nothing special about that. We'll go ahead and get logged in here. There we go, log right in with my fingerprint, fantastic. And supposedly these displays are individually color calibrated. They have 10 point multi-touch and they have Gorilla, Gra Gorilla, Grass? Gorilla Glass on the front. Well, of course there's no glass on the back. And Microsoft says that we should get up to 15 hours of battery life with the Surface Laptop Go 3, which is plenty to get through a regular workday. So I'm curious to see how that holds up. And on the inside at the top of the display is a 720p camera. We'll test that out. It's got Omnisonic speakers with Dolby Premium which I don't even see the speakers, so they must be down here somewhere. And some dual far field microphones. So, something fell. But there we go, we are into Microsoft Windows 11. Look at that pretty little flowery thing. I don't know what to call it. It's probably called something. So that was the setup process of the new Surface Laptop Go 3. Let me go ahead and check out the camera real quick. So here is the built-in camera inside the Surface Laptop Go 3. It is a 720p camera and you know, it looks like a 720p camera. So, you know, let me know in the comments down below what you think of it, but it definitely isn't very bright, even though it's blowing out my forehead and there's just not a lot of detail in the picture, but yeah, whatever. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and test out the speakers in this real quick. We'll go ahead and turn the volume all the way up and hit play.
All right, now first impression of the speakers is there's not a lot of high end, there's not a lot of low end. It's all kind of a little bit muddly, but uh, you know, I guess they'll work for most things probably. Although the maximum volume just didn't seem very maximum either. And I do want to try out the keyboard real quick because I really like the Magic Keyboard on Apple laptops, so let's see. And the keys do feel a little bit softer than say the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. It just, it's a little bit different. It's not bad, it's just not the same as what I use most of my working days. And this is a diving board style trackpad, so it's not like a MacBook where you can basically tap and push down anywhere. You can't push down physically at the top of the trackpad, but it is all touch sensitive, so you can touch and drag and hold without clicking and just kind of double tap to drag, and that does work. But it is a little bit smaller than I'm used to as well. It's definitely not as large as a MacBook Air trackpad, but this is a smaller device at 12.4 inches versus 13.6 or whatever the MacBook Air is. Now I want to look a little bit closer at the display, and I like to go to The Verge for that because there's a lot of text and there's photos and there's lots of colors, so it's a good example website to test things out on. And overall, it looks pretty good. It's, again, not quite as sharp as what I am used to on a MacBook, but it looks pretty darn good. And let's see the brightness. And wow, okay, going all the way bright, it's pretty darn bright. That is definitely bright enough to use in pretty much any lighting that you would normally be using a laptop in. So that is pretty good, A plus on the, the backlight. I don't know how many nits it is, but it looks pretty good. But we'll turn that down because it's way brighter than I would ever actually use it in this room. Then there's the bezels, and the bezels are probably going to get some flack online because they are a little bit bigger than some other laptops on the market. But you know what? Just like a notch, the bezels just kind of fade away as you're using the device. So I'm not too concerned with the size of the bezels. On the plus side with this device, we do get a touch screen. So again, those times when you just want to reach up and touch the screen, you actually can. So I do actually like that and wish we would get that on a MacBooks. I think that's about it for the setup, unboxing, and initial impressions of this Surface Laptop Go 3. I think this is gonna be a fun little laptop to use, and I will definitely be comparing it against the M1 and M2 MacBook Airs. So if you have any questions about that or you wanna see that video, let me know down in the comments below. And while I'm getting those videos made for you, you probably wanna know how I feel about the M2 MacBook Air, which you can find out right over here. Yeah, hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.